Okay, so here we have the ugly duckling. Now, once upon a time, on a dark and stormy night, a great wild wind blew down from the hills. It whistled through the woods and across the fields to the river, where it blew a poor mother duck right out of her nest. Oh dear, she said, picking herself up, I must get back to my eggs. She stumbled around in the dark until she found her nest. Then, exhausted, she settled down again on the eggs to keep them warm. In the morning, the storm had passed and the sun came up warm and bright. The mother duck awoke when she felt something move beneath her. The eggs were rocking to and fro. She counted them. One, two, three, four, five six seven she had only laid six eggs but now there were seven and one was much bigger than the rest look at that one there i don't remember that one she said seven eggs i am a lucky duck soon one by one the smaller eggs broke open and out popped six pretty little yellow ducklings but the biggest egg had not hatched the six ducklings gathered around the big egg and watched as the mother duck sat on top of it for a day and a night until the egg at last began to stir. Slowly it cracked open and out tumbled a big scruffy duckling with grey feathers and a big black feet. Oh my, said the mother duck, you are a funny one. The other six ducklings were a little afraid of their new brother and scurried under the mother duck to hide. <coughs> They peered out at the big grey duckling as he wobbled out of his shell, gazed around at the world and smiled. Oh well, said the mother duck, he looks happy and healthy, and cuddled him to her with the other ducklings. The next day, the mother duck led her new family down to the river for a swimming lesson. The six yellow ducklings scampered down the bank after their mother, while the big grey duckling followed clumsily behind. One by one, they jumped in the water. The yellow ducklings struggled and splashed, but the grey duckling found his big feet very useful, and he swam straight away. The other ducklings tried to keep up with him, but the big duckling was much too fast. Oh well, said the mother duck, he may not be a beauty, but he certainly can swim. One day, the mother duck took her ducklings to visit some friends in the farmyard. The farm ducks were thrilled to see the new yellow ducklings. What little beauties, they said, fussing around and patting them. Then they saw the big grey duckling. What's that? said one old duck. What a strange, awkward creature, said another. The big grey duckling became shy and hid behind his mother. But she was proud, so proud of her offspring and urged him on, saying, And he's my big, strong son. <coughs> the big duckling struck out their chest and stepped forward, but tripped over his feet and fell headfirst into a muddy puddle. The farm ducks all laughed. Ha ha, what a mess. That's not very nice of those ducks, is it? The mother duck tried to keep, to help him. Leave him alone, she said. He may not be pretty, but he's gentle and brave. But the other ducks rolled about laughing. Ha ha, what a clumsy duck. What an ugly duckling. Other animals came over to see what the joke was. When the hens saw the big duckling, they laughed too. And so did the pigs and the sheep and the cow and the horse. The duckling looked around at all the laughing animals and frowned. I don't belong here, he said, and ran out of the farmyard and away across the fields. The duckling ran on and on until he came to a great marsh where the wild ducks lived. He was tired and sat down to rest 
in a clump of reeds. I know I'm not little, yellow and fluffy like my brothers and sisters, he said to himself, but I'm me. I may be scruffy and grey, and I may have a big black feet, but I'm as good as they are. Three wild ducks were flying past and saw him sitting in the reeds. Look, there's a mumbling duckling with big feet, said one, and they all laughed. The duckling looked up and stuck his tongue out at them. He didn't care. The wild ducks flew away, laughing loudly. See you again, flipper feet, they called. I'll show them. (coughs) (coughs) He fell asleep and dreamed he was with the other ducklings, just like himself. But suddenly, bang, bang, bang. The duckling awoke with a start. Men were shooting at the ducks all around. He put his wings over his head and tried to hide, but then something came rushing towards him through the marsh, a huge dog with a big red tongue and sharp teeth. The duckling jumped into the pool and hid under the water until the dog had gone. I don't belong here, said the duckling. This is a terrible place, and he hurried away from the marsh. As darkness fell, he came to a big wood. Strange noises and shadows seemed to follow him as he waddled along the path through the tall trees. I don't belong here, he whispered. Soon he came to a tumble-down cottage where a light shone from a window. The house belonged to an old woman who lived with her cat and a hen. The duckling was cold and tired, and he could see it was warm inside, so he crept in through a crack in the door. The old woman was pleased to see him. Now I shall have eggs from duck, from a duck as well as a hen, she said, and made a place for him, for the duckling, by the fire. When the old woman went to bed, the cat and the hen cornered the duckling. Can you lay eggs, said the hen. No, said the duckling, but I can swim. Can you purr, said the cat. No, replied the duckling, but I can dive. Swim and dive indeed. You're no use to our mistress, they both said. I don't care, said the duckling, and waddled out the door and into the night. I don't belong here, he said. (coughs) (coughs) The duckling journeyed on and on over the hills and dales, looking for a place to call home. Eventually he found a small lake where he lived on his own and no one bothered him. Many weeks passed, and the leaves on the trees turned from green to brown. The days were shorter, and the duckling shivered through the long nights. One evening, as the sun was setting, he heard a strange sound in the sky and looked up to see a flock of the most beautiful birds. They were magical white birds with great outstretched wings and long, graceful necks. One of them gave a strange cry that he seemed to understand, and he wished he could go with them. Oh, there they are, look, flying. Do you know what they are? Soon the cold winds of winter blew, and the lake where the duckling lived began to freeze. He swam around and around to keep warm, but the water froze around his feet, and he was stuck fast. The next morning a kind farmer passed by and saw the duckling He smashed the ice and carried the frozen bird home And put him by the fire to warm up The duckling felt happy and safe But when the farmer's children came home They were noisy and frightened him He flapped his wings to try and get away from them and knocked over a bowl of milk. The mother tried to catch him, but he flew into the butter tub and then fell in the flour barrel. Milk, butter and flour were spilled all over the floor. The farmer shouted, the mother shouted, the children shouted too. I don't belong here, said the duckling, and ran out of the door. On and on he ran through the snow until he could run no more. And there he curled up in a hollow and slept for the rest of the long, cold winter. He 
Is that flying in the sky there? It must be Christmas time, I think. Look, a snowman. He awoke beside a large lake with the sun on his back and the larks singing overhead. Spring had come at last. The grass was green. There was blossom on the trees and he was feeling much stronger. He wandered down to the water and swam away from the bank. He was enjoying himself when from behind some tall rushes sailed three of the beautiful white birds he had seen flying so high. They were coming towards him. He thought they were going to cat call him names as most animals did, so he puffed himself up, ready for them. But instead they greeted him warmly. Hello, brother. Are you new to these parts? The ugly duckling thought they were talking to someone else, so he bowed his head in confusion. Then he saw his reflection in the water. He was no longer scruffy, grey and clumsy. He was big and white and graceful, and just like the beautiful birds who were talking to him. What am I? he said to the three swans. Why, you're a swan, and a very handsome one too, they replied. A swan? A swan? I am not an ugly duckling. I am a swan, he cried. The duckling swam. The duckling swan lived happily ever after, and the three oldest swans became his best friends, and they swam and flew everywhere together. There we go, look, he's a beautiful swan. One day he was flying over the river bank when he saw his mother with a new family of ducklings, every one a duck this time. He flew down and told her his story. She was delighted with his good fortune and very proud of him. From then on, whenever she saw a swan flying high above her in the sky, she would say to her ducklings, or anyone else who would listen, that's probably my son up there. And there we go, look. And there we go, the ugly duckling, who turned out not to be a duckling, but a swan. And there we go, I love you lots.